Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How y'all doing out there this morning? Good. All right. Come on in. How y'all doing out there this morning? Hey, we're in the house of the Lord. We welcome you as well, everyone who's watching us via social media. We welcome you this morning. Give some thumbs on heart and some likes. Tag and share. Don't even wait. Tag and share right now. That's right. We are setting the atmosphere. And we invite you in to Spirit and Truth Christian Center located right here in the great city of Mount Vernon, Alabama. That's 19151 Shepherd Lake Road, Mount Vernon, Alabama. We invite you to come join us live. But if you're not able to, to, uh, to come into the house this morning, we want you to share this word. The atmosphere is already set. Guess what? You see that sign right there? It's a hallelujah. He has risen. He has risen. Hallelujah. What that means for us? The veil has been torn. The veil has been torn. Now we can enter the house with thanksgiving. We can enter the house with boldness and confidence. Because Jesus has given us access to enter to the room. So as you enter in, whether you join us live, whether you come into the building, you can enter here with boldness and thanksgiving this morning. Knowing that Christ has already done it. Why? You see the other sign right there? It says, he has risen just as he said. That means that we can take him at his word. That means that we can take Jesus at his word. That's right. So nothing but hope in this house this morning. For everyone who's joining us, the same hope is resting with you right now. The same victorious life is with all of us right now. What you believe in this morning? Oh, we trust a living God. We have a living Savior who took authority from them. <laughs> who took authority from the grave. Oh, he is alive. But he's just not seated in heaven. He said, I got to go so the promise can come back. Oh, God now lives in us and through us. We have a God that's so loving. He said, I'm going to put my presence in you. That's right. We are the promise of God this morning. So we walk in authority this morning. We walk in peace this morning. Lord, I thank you for the man that's going to deliver this word this morning. Lord, I thank you. There's coming revelation knowledge with boldness and confidence, Lord. Lord, I thank you that that word is going to be transforming lives as it has been spoken through him this morning, Lord. Lord, not only that, Lord, we thank you for the praise team. Lord, we thank you that their heart and mind is already settled, Lord. Lord, their atmosphere is already set for the Holy Spirit to have his way, Lord. Lord, they just urging us in to give you the glory for what you have already done, Lord. Lord, we thank that you ain't just done it, but you stayed and manifested in our lives, Lord. Lord, you Emmanuel, you the word that became flesh among us. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for this and even more in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Ooh, the splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, and all the earth rejoice, and all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness. 
his tries to hide they tremble at his voice trembles at his voice how great Glory to your name, You're Lord. You're worthy, God. 
You're worthy, God. We're walking in victory. Amen. 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 We're going to start that back. Go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. By the hand, I've been set free. He'll deliver me complete. Now I'm walking in victory. By the hands of the Almighty, I've been set free. He'll deliver me complete. Now I'm walking in victory. Oh, by the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free. He'll deliver me complete. Now I'm walking in victory. By the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free. He'll deliver me complete. Now I'm walking in victory. Oh, said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Walking in victory. Walking in victory, 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 walking
We are walking in victory. Hallelujah. Victory is ours, declares the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you walking in your victory this morning? Yes. It's not by our doing. It's by his doing. We got our peace back. We got our joy back. We got our hope back. This morning. Victory is ours. This morning. Oh, y'all ain't here this morning. You waiting on another morning. Victory is ours this morning. Hope is ours this morning. But Father, well, let me open up. Maybe someone want to come forward. We're just going to church in agreement this morning what Christ has already done. Anyone want to come forward this morning? Even if you're watching us via social media, you can put your comments in the chat room. That's right. We're just going to touch in agreement. The Lord is omniscient. He all knows. He knows what you type in. He knows what I'm going to say. That's right. He's omnipotent. He causes all things to work for our good. That's right. But we have to trust him this morning. He's a God. When he speaks, his word brings life. When he speaks, his word brings hope. When he speaks, his word brings deliverance this morning. What are you looking for? What are you seeking the Lord for this morning? Oh, worshiping him. He's just giving him the glory this morning. The so Lord, I thank you. I don't know how, but I thank you, Lord. You ever been in that place where you didn't know how, but the Lord brought you through? Oh, he deserved the glory. That's right. It's not by our doing. See, he brought those strength that we can now be healed in our bodies. We can now be healed in our mind. So, Father, we thank you that every organ in our body is functioning like you designed it. Lord, I thank you that we don't longer have the mind of the world, but now, Lord, we have the mind of Christ. Father, I thank you for walking in authority this morning. Father, we thank you this morning. That's right. We got a joy that did not come from the world. So the world cannot give it to you. Therefore, the world cannot take it away. We have a joy that has been given unto us from the Lord. That's right. An eternal joy. One that's everlasting joy. Oh, he's not a happenstance, God. He's a God that's always. I never leave you. No, I forsake you. But Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence this morning. Father, we give you the glory in all of these things. Father, we thank you that this house is now filled, not only with us, but with our children. Father, we thank you that this house is a house that's filled with purpose. Father, we thank you. We thank you right now that you are victorious in every area of our life. And we give you the glory this morning. In the name that's above every name, that's the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that every situation has already bowed. Father, we thank you that we're walking on top of the serpent's head. Father, we thank you now we'll leave here with authority. We'll leave here with boldness and confidence. For you are God that can be trusted. We thank you that you are the Lion of Judah. Father, we thank that we know that we are Judah this morning. Father, we thank you. We know who we are this morning. We no longer are lost generation. Father, we thank that your word has reached us, that we know who we are this morning. Father, we thank you for all of these things. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. 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 We can thank God this morning. Thank you, Lord. You in the house today? Amen. You alive. You on this side of heaven, so you can say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me from last Sunday all the way up until today. So you got to be thankful this morning. Amen. Tragedies are commonplace 
All kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. Economy's down, you can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. I don't hear y'all out there this morning. Don't sound like y'all thankful this morning. Y'all not making any noise in the house. See, folks without homes living out in the streets. And the drug habits, some say they just can't be. Mothers and robbers, no place seems to be safe. But he's been your protection every step of the way. I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. You want to know why? Hey, see, it could have been me. Thank you. Every hour. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you. Thank you for your power. Thank you. Thank you for protection. Thank you. Every hour. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for protection. Thank you for keeping me. Every hour. I want to say thank you for your love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for protection. Thank you, Lord. Every hour. I want to thank you for your love. Thank you. Thank you for your power. Thank you. Thank you for protection. Every hour. Thank you. I want to thank you for your love. Thank you. want to thank you for keeping me. Thank you. want to thank you for leading me. Thank you for guiding me. show you how to fight. You got to be ready. Thank 
you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's our last one. It's our last song. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. See, we're going to stand on Psalm 23 this morning. The Lord is my shepherd. There's a table that you prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I find my battle. There's a table that you prepared for me yes. in the presence of my enemies. It's his body and blood he shed for me. This is how I fight my battle. See, I believe we've overcome and we will lift our song of praise for all he's done. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my this is how, this is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how. In the valley, I know that you're with me. And surely, his goodness and mercy follow me so my weapons are praise and thanksgiving this is how I find my battle see I believe we've overcome and I will lift my song of praise for all he this is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. This is how. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. This is may look like you're surrounded, but you're surrounded by the Most High God. So you can fight your battle with praise and thanksgiving. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, Lord. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Let me hear you say it. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yes. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Lord. But I'm surrounded by you. Hey, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I find my battles. 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 This is how I fight 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 my battles. Thanksgiving is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Come on, declare it. 
this morning. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my Oh, it may look like we're surrounded, but we're surrounded by Him. We may look like we're surrounded, but we're surrounded by Him. It may look like we're surrounded, but we're surrounded by Him. It may look like we're surrounded, but we're surrounded by Him. It may look like we're surrounded, but we're surrounded by Him. He declared that this morning, so the enemy will know. It look like we're surrounded, but we're surrounded by Him. See, you got to let him know this morning. It may look like we're surrounded, but we're surrounded by Him. Can't nobody fight against our God. Yeah, it, it may look like we're surrounded, but we're surrounded by Him. Hallelujah! Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! What you say this morning? Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! 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 Praise the Lord! Hallelujah. There I go. Here I go. Here I go. Hallelujah. God is an awesome God. You have to know how to fight in these times. Woo. Sometimes you can't fight with your fist. You can't fight like this. You got to fight like this. Position is vital when you're fighting. Your stance is vital when you're fighting. Amen. So you have to be reminded, as I'm telling you, every song this morning is setting you up for the time that we're in this morning. Amen. Father God, we just thank you this morning that for those who are gathered in this place today and those who are watching us via the internet, via Facebook or YouTube or um, who will watch it on replay, Father God, I thank you that your word will penetrate their heart, that your word, your inspired word, will motivate them, Father God, and move them forward in their assignment. In Jesus' name. All right, all right. Y'all ready? Amen. I don't have nobody on the clock. My timer, okay? I'm going to keep myself on the timer. Because y'all know I'm usually 30, 35, then we rocking and rolling, locking and loading. That's how he moves. And I thank God for how he moves Amen. through me so that it will be a blessing for you. Amen. This morning, I want to talk to you about something that everybody really hadn't talked about, about this very day. The first thing I want to talk to you this morning is about pressure. I'm not talking about your blood pressure. I'm talking about the pressure for us as born-again believers to be or not to be the priest that he has called us to be. Pressure always affects us either internally or externally. We all face it. And at this time, on this particular day, which has been assigned as Palm Sunday, mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about the pressure of Palm Sunday. I want you to think about what our brother had to go through at this particular time. Everybody in this place everybody on the internet, everybody on replay, know somebody in the natural 
that is right now taking some type of blood pressure medicine. Everybody of us in here know somebody that's doing that today. Pressure, physically, has the ability to shut down everything in our body. It causes everything to be off whack. It begins to affect us as a headache. And you're wondering why I got this headache. Why, I'm, you know, some people get nauseous. When your blood pressure, your body begins to tell you, you're not at your normal level. There is something that is affecting you, either internally or externally. We have our health and wellness and fitness trainer in here today. Amen. And I can guarantee you he can testify that when he began his calling for health, wealth, wellness, and fitness, there was some pressure Amen. to be or not to be. Amen. There was some external pressure. Amen. Man, you don't need to be doing that. Don't nobody want to so into that. Don't nobody want to advertise that. Yeah. Everybody's doing that. The pressure internally. God, is this really what you want me to do? <clears throat> because he says in his word that he wants us to be healthy. He wants not only this physical body, but our spirit and our soul Amen. to be healthy. So there are some decisions that you have to make to be or not to be. And there's always pressure to be. And there's always pressure to not be. So today I want to talk to you about the pressure. And pressure is a part of our life. We've all experienced it from when we were coming up in school, the pressure to fit in, the pressure to be liked by everybody. Ah, see, it's making you think. Pressure. People say there's good pressure and bad pressure. To me, it's all pressure. My response to the pressure determines whether I'm going to grow to be or not to be. Right. All right. Pressure. So our brother showed up on the scene on what our country calls December 25th. He was born into this world. And he was born in Bethlehem. He came into the world not in a good place. When it had been prophesied that the king was coming that the king was going to be born. But when you think of a king, you would probably think, oh, it ought to be some place that's nice and comfortable, mm -hmm. a place that has everything that you need, mm. all the amenities. You know, we look for those things when we travel. Mm. What are the amenities? What it look like? I'm a right. person that when I travel, I do not like staying in places with outside doors. <laughs> I need a place to stay where they can be inside and they got cameras. So they can see you when you come in and see you when you leave. Right. I don't want to stay in a kick down the door place. <laughs> <laughs> I have those in many, but our brother came into this world with no amenities. All right now, come on. Come on. No real comfort. Came into a place that didn't even smell good. But the call on his life to be the king, to be the savior, that's pressure. Mm. To know that where you come from mm. doesn't necessarily mean that's where you're going to end up. Come on now. Right. Come on. Because you have a call on your life to be, there's going to be pressure. Mm -hmm. Amen. As priests, Men, women, boys and girls, as priests, there's pressure to step into priesthood. Yeah. Amen. Right. Yeah. Right. 
There's pressure to be, and there's pressure not to be. What you going to do with the pressure? As I said, our brother came in on Christmas. The next time we hear about him, he's 12 years old. They have gone into Jerusalem for a census. And he up in church. I'm going to say church. They say synagogue, but it's church. He up in church, wowing them, 12 years old. His folks looking for him. He done wandered off. And he's doing what he has been called to do. Mm -hmm. right. He is being what he is called to do Amen. in a time and a place where that doesn't usually happen. Most priests in the priesthood usually don't step into their priesthood until they're 30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Until they are 30. But Jesus at 12, up and now blowing their mind with the word. So this is what y'all say. Let's talk about it. And they couldn't believe it. And so from 12 years old up until 30, we don't hear nothing about him. Do you think he just went to church one time? Do you think he just studied one time? We were I'm going to use Mount Vernon, for instance, and I'm going to say all of us from Mount Vernon. All of us from Mount Vernon, and Jesus comes to, Jesus is born here. Everybody know his folks. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody know everything about him. Oh, they've been watching him since he came into the world. We've been watching him in church. But he lost Jesus. He's still in his calling because he's working with his daddy as a carpenter. But we don't hear nothing about who he made furniture for. We don't hear nothing about how long did it take him to learn the craft. But he was learning all the time. He wasn't viral yet. But he still was mm. in his hometown. Yeah. Amen. Everybody knew him. Oh, here come Jesus. Jesus, where are you going? I'm going to church where you need to be going. <laughs> Amen. He was doing what he had been called to do, right. to be. Right. Even when nobody knew about it outside of Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. Everybody in Mount Vernon knew who he was. Knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's just Joseph boy. Yeah. That's just Joseph boy. Mm. But Joseph boy got a call on his life. Amen. In his hometown. Amen. Boy, what you going to do with your life? You going to build furniture all your life? You going to be just like your daddy, a carpenter. And I'm sure he probably said, yeah, you right. But what you talking about, you see me building right here. Yeah. I'm about to build something else that's going to oh, outlast my. even this wood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What you using to sit down on, lay down on, eat from, I'm going to build something that's going to be everlasting. Amen. Yeah. So if you go to Luke chapter 19, and I believe it's at the very bottom of um, that list I have, Luke chapter 19, and I can't see in the back, so I'm going to turn around. But I, I want you, I'm taking you back to a time. It says, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Seeking and saving is a hard thing to do, even in his time. Seeking and saving. Seek is defined as actively and consistently searching out by any means necessary. Was he searching out by any means necessary for you? Save to preserve from injury, destruction, or evil of any kind. It also means to rescue from danger or eternal death. Jesus did not go viral until he was 30. He became public. What happens when you become public? 
Why? You're going to get some pressure. When you go viral, when you become public, when everybody is talking about, ooh, they can show preach that word. They changed my life by the word they spoke, and everybody is liking and sharing. Jesus went viral when he became 30. How old are you? Are you still low-key or are you gone viral? As a priest, you should be viral. You should have gone public by now. If we are our brothers, kinfolk, other sisters and brothers, we got the same training he got. So why haven't we gone public? Why haven't we gone viral? Pressure. There's a lot of pressure. He says he came to seek and to save. I'm about to take you to a day which is the greatest search and rescue mission in history. It is the greatest search and rescue mission in history. Amen. There's never been one like it. Amen. There'll never be one that can compare to it. Amen. You know why? Because that mission is still going. That's why it's the greatest. With any search and rescue mission, they look for you for so many days. Every search and rescue personnel will tell you, we're going to look by water and we're going to look by land. We're going to get in our boats and we're going to go up the river. We're going to look for the, on the side, on the banks. By air, we're going to go over the trees. We're going to see we can see any trail of you. Now they have become so... Um, Technology savvy, they got infrared mm -hmm. where they can pick up your body heat. Right. But I'm talking about a search and rescue mission, not for one person, yeah. not for two people, yeah. not even for five people, yeah. not even for a hundred people. Yeah. I'm talking about a search and rescue for a whole world, yeah. every inhabitant on this planet. The greatest rescue. But even with this search and rescue mission, there was pressure. Today is Palm Sunday. I remember coming up as a child on Palm Sunday. We know when we came in and they had them little green little leaves. Baby, we had them leaves. We'd be playing with them all during church while the preacher preaching. But at Palm Sunday, it was to symbolize what today meant. We had those. But it's got to be more than just about a leaf. It's got to be more than just about that little green piece that I got of a palm. Amen. It's got to be more to it than just that because we do that every year. So it has to be, you know, we do that, you know, the first time you do that, you excited. But what about next year? What about next year? Let me take you to a time where Jesus, we're going to start at John chapter 11. I wish I had my thing back there, but verse 1, it says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Then Jesus heard that. He, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So how are how, how you going on public? Jesus, you already been doing stuff. You know, you viral. You know, you've been doing miracles, feeding 5,000. You've been healing people, the lame walking, the blind seeing, people being depossessed. Amen. Amen. But there is something a 
about this particular story. Go to the next verse. I want you to see something. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. All right? Six. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I know you're going viral. I know you're going public. Everybody know about you. But you, you know, we're supposed to be right here. Why, why, you, why are you going to wait two days? Why wait two days? And I'm going to tell you what's so profound about this is that him waiting these two days, it says was to glorify God. But he didn't, we didn't even read that him raising his friend from the dead was going to put a target on his back. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I ain't felt that kind of pressure before. Where somebody hunting me down to kill me because I just told somebody, you here. I just told somebody, you delivered. That's all I did. That's all. But this very situation, go to the next one. Then after that, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. He ain't even coming. He meant what he said. Mm. I ain't going. I know. He said that sickness is un not unto death. Mm. Don't you know that the folks that he was evangelizing to heard that conversation? You mean to tell me he's not going to see back? <laughs> you mean to tell me he is not going to see about that man? <laughs> he's not going to see about his friend? Go to the next one. His disciples said, Master, the Jews of Lake sought to stone thee, and go as thy thither again. Jesus said, baby, that can't nothing to do with this vial. I'm walking right up in there. Amen. Oh, y'all were looking for me? You looking for me? Y'all looking for me? Here I am. It's a lot of pressure in seeking and saving. It's a lot of pressure put on this our brother to seek and save. To get everything back in order. To know that when you were born, and we all say this, we were born to die. We're going to die one day. But this man knew that his death was going to be a death that was going to rescue millions. One death. The greatest search and rescue. What's the next one? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day and he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. He's trying to get y'all seen, get them to see. Y'all really don't understand. Y'all been walking with me all this time. And y'all don't understand how things are set up. The next one. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. I want you to go to um, John chapter 12, because I want you to know something. When he did, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, there was pressure on Jesus from that very point. Because there were so many people there that saw Lazarus come out of that grave. Mm -hmm. That the word began to spread. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Even the chief priests and the Pharisees had spies at that meeting. At that encounter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That very thing not only put Jesus on the most wanted list. Mm -hmm. But it also put Lazarus on the most wanted list. Yeah. Now why you think that? See, most people don't even think about that. 
This is the one thing that set everything in motion for today, for Palm Sunday. This one thing, when you have a man that shows up on the scene at 30 years old and begins to preach the kingdom of God is at hand, that he is the Messiah, that he is the savior of the whole world, that he is the king of the Jews, and he steps on the scene at 30, and causes an uproar. He collapses every system that is in place Amen. by him going public. Amen. He was already public at home. But now he's gone public outside of home. He done started traveling. And you know, Jesus traveled. He ain't got no car. There is no internet. There are no cell phones. There's no TV. There's no radio. So how did they find out about what he was doing? Mm. Folks talking. Mm. Yeah. Folks talking. And the word begins to travel. Jesus raised Lazarus last Saturday, last Saturday, Jesus raised Lazarus last Saturday. Jesus found out about the plot because there was one that went back and said, hey, this man just raised Lazarus from the dead. I think y'all just need to go on, on, just throw your hands up and just join him. Yeah. Don't kill him, just join him. Yeah. But there were systems, there were chief priests, there were Pharisees, there were Romans that did not want their system dissolved. They were in charge and what they said goes. But here comes someone that at 30 years old shows up on the scene and for three and a half years, he's gone public. And he does the one thing that really sets this whole week in motion. He raises a man from the dead. That one act, don't you know what them folks say? This is it. This is it. Because you know they had been watching him for them three and a half years. Amen. They had nothing to say about him healing people, folks walking, folks seeing, folks being depossessed, folks being fed. They did not have a problem with him until he raised this man from the dead. This was it. This was the last straw. They said, I'll be John Brown. This man done raised a man from the dead. Ain't nothing y'all can do with him now. There's nothing you can do with him now. And they said, oh, yeah. We're going to kill that miracle, and we're going to kill the miracle worker. It's pressure in seeking and saving the lost. There's pressure to be or not to be. And we all face it. John chapter 12, verse 1 says, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, was which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. So he done came back. Lazarus was raised from the dead last Saturday. I want you to think about it. Today's Sunday. Yesterday was Sunday. I mean, Saturday. He came back on Saturday. Back to these people. Same place. Like, I'm going to show up right here in front of you. You can't run me off. Because my call is to be the savior of the whole world. No matter what the pressure is, whether it's internal or external. 
Doesn't matter if the economy up, down. Doesn't matter if my friends like me, don't like me. Amen. If I can't, um, my business not popping right now, but you're still in business. Amen. No matter what wars are going on, no matter what's happening technology-wise, no matter what I feel like, no matter what I think, no matter that perfect syndrome I'll be thinking, I got to be perfect. I need a perfect house, perfect car, perfect wife, the perfect husband, the perfect children. The perfect syndrome. That's a lot of pressure, don't you think? And we as believers sometimes fall into that arena of the perfect syndrome. Our children got to be perfect. But I'm going to tell you something. Today, God is saying, you're going to have to let that perfect syndrome go. Because there's a call on your life. And you're going to, there's some pressure going to be applied Amen. to them children, Amen. to that house, Amen. to that car, to that job, Amen. to your finances, Amen. to your friends. Amen. I'm telling you. Here we are on Palm Sunday. Second verse. There they made him a supper. Mary and Martha served. But Lazarus was the one, one of them that sat at the table with him. The miracle and the miracle worker sitting at the same table. Think about that. The miracle, the rescued and the saved, sitting at this table with the searcher and the saint. <laughs> the searcher and the saint. And Jesus already know it's going to be some pressure. It's going to be some pressure behind this. But you know, he, he ain't worried about that pressure. In verse 3. Then took Mary a pound of ointment and spiked a very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of ointment. Let me break it down to you. Supper with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. His feet anointed. Now, he being set up. Because he know what tomorrow is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yesterday he was saying, I know what tomorrow is. But there is nowhere in written history where it says that he said, man, I sure hope tomorrow don't come. Because I know what tomorrow going to lead to. But I have to remember my assignment. I was created to be a savior. My job is to search and save. I'm searching for people who are out there that are lost. Lost in their mind, lost in their health, lost in their finances, lost. They lost. They in the dark. And here he come. He didn't, he didn't have dinner with them. Now let's go to uh, 9. 9 says, much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. No telephone, no internet. No TV, no radio. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he raised from the dead. Folks want to see the miracle. Not just the miracle worker. Because I want to see, I want to see for myself. This man walking, eating, living, breathing. I want to see this for myself. So everybody want to see. Everybody want to see. Verse 10. But the chief priest consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. So you got to kill that miracle. <laughs> got to kill that miracle. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure on the system. Uh, amen. On the way we have things set up. Yeah, we can't have this walking around yeah. here in front of everybody because yeah. they're going to go against us. Yeah. So we're going to have to put him to death. We're going to kill him. We're going to kill this miracle. We're going to kill this boy. Kill this man. Oh, 
going to kill him, verse 11. Because that, by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed oh, on Jesus. <laughs> I'm telling you, him raising Lazarus from the dead was the last straw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last straw. I'm coming in here turning over y'all apple cart. I'm going to tear up y'all whole house. I'm going to tear up all y'all rules, y'all regulations, y'all traditions. I'm going I'm to tear up all that. Yeah, yeah. So the only way, the, the only thing they was thinking is, if we kill the miracle, we're going to kill his popularity. Mm -hmm. He will no longer be viral. He will no longer be public because he'll be made ashamed of. Verse 12. On the next day, this is the day, Palm Sunday. This is where we are right now today. Where we are today. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Now, he done gone viral. Now, he done showed up in our city. And these folks out here, they packed out. I mean, you can't see no ground nowhere because it's covered. Because here come the king. And it was customary when kings went to war and came back with the victory, they would take palm trees and branches and put them down on the road as a sign of rolling out the red carpet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here come my king, he done won the victory. <laughs> there he go, do you see him, do you see him, where you want? <laughs> but there was pressure in him coming into the city because he knew what was gonna happen. Some, I could, I'm gonna call this beginning tomorrow, it's hell week. There's a lot of pressure in hell week. If you read the story of our brother from Palm Sunday, the big parade, the fanfare, the red carpet them being rolled out, and we get to the end of the week, no red carpet. No fanfare. The same people that welcomed him into the city or the same people that said crucify him. Can you imagine the pressure of knowing these people were just praising the God that I serve? I ain't done nothing to call for me to be crucified. But there's pressure in walking in your priesthood. Amen. As a priest, there's pressure for you to be or not to be. Because the first Palm Sunday occurred during a time of extreme conflict with those in authority and citizens who were looking for the Messiah. And they weren't looking for the Messiah to save them. They were looking for the Messiah to release them from the oppression of the Roman Empire. It wasn't about really God and what he could do, how he can change our mind. We want to be from under this oppression. That's what we want. Now, Dad, we know you're doing all those miracles and signs and wonders but we really want to get up from the, under this system mm -hmm. that's oppressing us. Right. But my thing was, with Palm Sunday, Jesus already knew that them folks were going to turn on him. So he didn't succumb to the pressure. It didn't stop him in his track. 
He didn't have no second thoughts about retreating, about going back. He didn't have no thoughts about, God, do you really want me to do this? But he did have those thoughts because he went in the Garden of Gethsemane. You remember? And he was praying. He said, can't y'all stay with me two hours? The man's sweating blood. Now, that's some pressure. I can't sweat no blood. I don't care how much pressure you put on my hand, ain't no blood going to pop out unless I got a cut. Can you imagine the pressure of our brother on Palm Sunday saying, God, if there be any other way, but not my will, your will be done. We celebrate Palm Sunday every year. But have you ever thought about the pressure of Palm Sunday or what this man went through for you? What he really went through for you, being popular, being told, hey, you ain't going to be able to do that. You done done too much now. You done done too much. You done done too much. You done said too much. You done moved too much. We gave you a little bit of wiggle room, but now you just want to take that mind and just do raise this man from the dead. But what they didn't understand was the mission was to seek and to save. Seeking and saving. That's all his ministry was, seeking and saving. There was a lot of pressure in seeking and saving. There were a lot of people in his inner circle that caused a lot of pressure for him while he's seeking and saving, asking stupid questions, doing stupid things, getting the big head because he done gone viral, he done gone public. But on this Palm Sunday, God is wanting you to know there's pressure in the walk that's on your life. But that he wants you to be like your brother. No matter what it look like, smell like, feel like, taste like, don't succumb to the pressure, Amen. whether it's internal or external. Amen. Right. Don't succumb to the pressure because you succumbing to the pressure is going to affect not only you, but your whole lineage, Amen. everybody behind you, everybody around you. Can you imagine if it were you, would you have gone into Jerusalem knowing that you're on the most wanted list, that they looking for you, that they plotting and scheming against you? Can you imagine? I know we get, the only time I've really been scared is, you know, when you're little and you're scared, when you have done something that you know you ain't going to do and you're going to get a whooping. And you know that whooping going to be the worst whooping in your life. You try to hide. You try to go somewhere else because you try to prolong it. Like, let me see if I can wait them out. Jesus didn't have that option. He did not have that option. His assignment was to give his life from generation to generation to generation. His life, his death saves lives. His death saves lives. So we on Palm Sunday, this week, we're starting a fast on 12.01 tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. That's a lot of pressure because we're comfortable in where we are, and we're being asked to do something that's uncomfortable. Amen. So you have a lot of pressure on you to be or not to be because you're fasting and you're praying. You're fasting and you're praying. Amen. So you're going to have to really make a decision and say, Lord, I need answers this week. I need you to move this week. I need you to open doors this week, Lord. 
And if that means I have to fast and pray, Lord, that's what I'm going to do. Because there is no release. There is no opening. There is no breakthrough. Unless I allow the pressure of not having comfort. There is no growth if there is no pressure. If I'm lifting weights, I can start out at five pounds. I can probably ha I can handle five pounds. The minister Andre said you got to work yourself up. So then you do ten. You do ten pounds. Oh, I can do ten pounds. That ain't me. I, if I can lift a ten pound bag of sugar, baby, I got these weights. <laughs> but when you start going to fifteen, and then you go to twenty, then you go to twenty-five. And then you do 60 with your legs. Do them leg presses. And you just really got to dig deep. And all these muscles right here begin, you applying pressure, Amen. and they applying pressure. Amen. That's what happens when you go into a trial, when you go into a challenge. It's pressure being applied. Amen. How you going to do the pressure? I ain't going to give up. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't taking the thing out and put it back on 40 or put it back on 20. No. I'm going to be like, whew. I'm going to get it. Let me get one. Lord, I did one. Let me get two. And I'm going to tell you, when the pressure is being applied, you become accustomed. You get easy. Once it comes easy, the more pressure you apply, the easier it becomes because you're being consistent. You're not giving up. God, I trust your word. By your stripes, I'm healed. Lord, by your stripes, I'm delivered. You said I'm going to be the head and not the tail. Lord, I'm going to be above and never beneath. You said, well, I'm going to be blessed coming in, blessed going out. Amen. Father God, you said me and my whole house going to be saved yeah. because we make a decision to serve you, Lord. Amen. Father, I thank you that every need that I have need, Lord God, you will supply. Amen. You are applying pressure. Yeah. And pressure is being applied back. Amen. You wonder why the test coming, why the challenge coming. You got to apply some pressure. You can't apply, ooh, I just don't know if it ain't going to work right. You got to apply the word pressure. Amen. You got to use God. You say, God, I'm going to remind you of your word because you the one going to be made ashamed of. That's how to talk to him. Amen. Look, let me tell you something. Do what you said. Don't folks wrote down what you said, and I'm just going by what you said. Amen. So I'm going to repeat what you said, and if what you said don't happen, you going to look bad. Amen. And you know he ain't going to look bad. Amen. You ain't going to because he said in his word. I send my word out, and it's not going to return back to me void. Amen. It's going to accomplish exactly what it was sent out to do. That's right. So that pressure. Right. So the pressure of Palm Sunday is no matter what it look like, God, I'm going to keep walking forward. Because he set things in motion Amen. from last Saturday up until yesterday. He had his dinner. And to me, that was the last supper right there. The last real supper. You know when you go to dinner, you know people on death row, they get that last dinner request. I don't know why that they do that to people. Why? Don't you know that people on death row under pressure too? They are under extreme pressure because they don't know what day. They don't know what hour. They know they say they're going to do it. But they don't know the hour and they don't know the day. Wow. They just living every day. Mm. Ooh, Lord, I wonder if it's going to be today. Ooh, Lord, I wonder if it's going to be today. Ooh, Lord, I wonder if it's going to be today. Lord, let me just see Christmas, Lord. Christmas come, Christmas go. They still on death row. Think about Jesus knowing that today on Palm Sunday, I'm going into Jerusalem. They got a parade. I can see it from here. I can see all them people. I can see the palms out on the ground. I can see all that. The red carpet done been rolled out for me. But I'm coming in on something that's not very kingly. Because he came in on a donkey that had never been ridden. Anything that ain't never been ridden, if it's a horse, ain't it bucking? Even the Duncan knew his calling. Oh, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's a 
lot of pressure not to book. Yeah. Amen. Not to kick off. Amen. Not to say, I ain't never been written. Why are you on me? <laughs> but the donkey even knew his call. He knew, I got to bring help, bring this in. I got to bring him in. My job is to bring him in. Amen. You don't hear nothing else when Jesus go down the red carpet. Mm -hmm. What I call it, the green mile. <laughs> Once he go down the green mile, you know more about the donkey. Yeah. The donkey has done his part. Amen. He didn't buck. Amen. It's in his nature to buck. Amen. But he didn't buck. He didn't throw the king off. He ain't let the king down. Because he knew, I'm carrying this in. I'm going to help this guy. Oh, this mission is going to be accomplished. I know my assignment. You should know your assignment. Jesus affect, affected masses of people. Now, you're probably thinking, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't around no masses. On your job is a mass. Hmm. At the grocery store is a mass. Amen. In your neighborhood is a mass. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, 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 you affected masses. Amen. You might not be viral, but you affected masses. Jesus, 12. And from 12 to 30, that's 18 years. He wasn't public, though. But I guarantee you, he was still affecting masses. Because there was no problem for him to go public. He was like, oh, we're going to go now. I done did my time here. Now it's time for me to go to the next level. Amen. So what your assignment is today, realize that the call on your life is to be. It's to become what he has called you to be. Amen. To be. That's all you know. That's all you know. That's all you're going to accept is to be. To be in my calling. To be in my walk. Because on today, at the very end of this week, which I call hell week, and they say it's holy week. But I don't, the only thing holy about it is when he crucified. And that ain't even, that ain't even holy right there. That's hell. That's pressure. Physical pressure. External pressure. Internal pressure. You cannot tell me that Jesus, if he was a man like we were, with a call on his life, if he didn't think when he's in the garden, said, Lord, if there be another way, because he knew what was going to happen. He knew these folks were going to kill me. These people probably going to torture me. They're going to make a, a public example out of me. And that's exactly what they did. That's exactly what they did. But the pressure of Palm Sunday is to be or not to be. Amen. Will you walk down the red carpet knowing that at the end is death? Will you knowing that people are going to praise you. They're going to pat you on the back. They're going to say, ooh, you doing this. Girl, you got it going on. And to know that when you get down to the other end, at the end of that red carpet, them same people going to be down there, oh, you ain't nothing. You ain't never been nothing. They ain't going to never be nothing. Will you still keep walking straight down this red carpet with that smile on your face like, yeah, keep talking, keep talking. Mm-hmm. I knew that's what I knew. I already that's where I was gonna be at the end of the beginning. That's what he knew. The beginning, the middle, and the end. He already knew that. So today I want you to be ready that when this week comes, that you starting at 12 and 1, will be fasting and praying this week. Amen. Absolutely. Because there you have a call on your life. As a priest, you are all of age except for one. You are all of age to where you should be stepping into your priesthood. 
You should be stepping into your priesthood. You should be seeking and saving. You should be on a search and rescue mission. Every time your eyes open, Lord, what's my mission today? Who do I need to find today? Who needs saving today? That's your call. As his sister, as his brother. That's your call. As a priest. You can do it. On Resurrection Sunday, you can get them and say, Ooh, Lord, we made it. We made it through hell week. Because everything was in place. Everybody was on assignment. Everybody has a role to play. Everybody. So, Lord, we thank you today. We thank you that today we be who you called us to be. Father, we accept your assignment on our life, Lord God. Father, we thank you right now that every person under the sound of my voice, Lord, will not succumb to the pressure to back up, to give up, to give in, to doubt and unbelief and fear. Father, we thank you right now that we all walk in our purpose. Yes, Lord. Father, thank you for open doors right now, Lord God. Thank yes, you for Lord. wisdom that will flow this week. Thank you for revelation knowledge that will be revealed to us this week, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you right now that we are celebrating, we are remembering this very day, Lord, that this day is the beginning of the end and the beginning of another chapter. Father God, we just thank you today. We give you praise, honor, and glory for your word today in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. 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 So there's pressure today. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Pressure, pressure. I'm telling you that God was dealing with me with uh, some pressure last week. I had to seek some prayer because I was doubting some things and then he said, it's nothing but pressure, Jackie. Amen. You, 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 you where you're supposed to be, you're on the path that you're supposed to be. Amen. Don't look at the numbers, don't look at everybody being exposed. Jesus was hidden for 18 years in his hometown doing what he was supposed to be doing. My, My timing is, your, is not your timing. And so I had to be reminded, Amen. even me have to be reminded Amen. to be who I've called you to be Amen. and know that there's going to be some internal and some external pressures, but you're going to grow. Amen. You're going to develop Amen. under pressure. Amen. Everything is developed under pressure. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, at this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the doors right now before we do our offering. Because this is a, a time in which we live right now where we are in a time where there is a lot of pressure that we are dealing with as a people, Amen. as born-again believers, where we, that people are questioning who we serve, what we believe, do we really trust him? And there are some internal questions that you've had. Why am I going through this? Why is this challenging me? Lord, you know that I pray, I read my word. Why is this attacking me now? Why am I getting so much external pressure? Because he, the enemy wants you to give up. But I'm here today to tell you that you can't give up. You got Amen. to stand firm. Amen. Amen. And the only way you're going to stand firm is you become a part of my family. Because you have others that can help undergird you, that can encourage you, that can lean, you can lean on, you can talk to, that will give you the word and you will be encouraged. So if you out there, Facebook, YouTube, I'm telling you, it's time to come home. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We got the red carpet rolled out for you. Amen. And I can tell you, 
You're going to start at the front. We're going to be hollering and yelling all the way. We ain't going to have no naysayers in the crowd. Amen. We are saying, come on, you can do it. Amen. Come on back home to where you belong. Amen. So if you need to come on home, come on home. Amen. We're not asking any questions about where you're being, what you're doing. Amen. We just want to see you come home. We're going to welcome you in, and we're going to be like, oh, we're so glad to see you. Come on, sit down and eat. Amen. You ain't got to pay for nothing. It's already been paid for. Amen. So you can come in here, and you can be at home. You can be around your new family, Amen. a family that's going to pray for you, that's going to go to war for you. So if you are that person that needs to come home, come on home. Now is the time to come home. You've been out there fighting and struggling and wondering and trying to do it on your own. You can't do it on your own. Amen. You need some help. So come on where the help is. The Lord is your help and he is your strength. Amen. So come on, man, come on. If you are out there today and you kind of got off the track, you know, you ran away from home, you wanted to do your own thing, the door is still open. You can come on back home. Yes. Like our parents tell us all the time, I don't care where you go in this world, go what you do, you can always come home. Yeah. You can always be fed. You can always get a meal. You can get clothes. You can lay down and rest. Yes. Yes. Come on. The door is open for you. If you are looking for a place where you can come and be fed and be encouraged and grow, and be loved. The body of Christ is where you need to be. Spirit and truth is the best place that you can come because I can tell you we will welcome you with open arms because that's what some people say this is the hospital so come on into the hospital. Come on down to the hospital and, and get admitted and get your needs met. Get healed, delivered, and set free at the hospital of Spirit and Truth Christian Center. Come on in. If you are a part of our family, and then you want to, you praying this week that we're going into prayer and fasting, and you want to, you can pray the natural words, it's just the regular words, but there's something about praying in the spirit that the enemy, the enemy can't, he don't understand nothing. We got a secret code with our father. Amen. Just like we as parents know our children's voice, Know our children's cry from any other cry. I don't care who, if it's a whole room full of children crying. We know our children's, our child's cry. Amen. Oh, that's mine. Let me go up here and see what's going on with mine. Amen. So you need to come on in. Come on in. You have a secret conversation with God where you can be built up on your faith. You got to work that as much as you apply pressure. You're going to build yourself up on your most holy faith. That's what the word says. That's praying in the Holy Ghost. If that's you today, hey, come on. We are ready to help you take that next step. Amen. We are here to help you move to the next level. Amen. Our hearts and minds are clear. Let me, let, let, let me ask this. Lord, I thank you. Is there anybody that needs prayer right now for a situation that you're going through? You won't release. You won't release. Come on up here. Because we're going to get this done today. Amen. Amen. We won't release today. Amen. Father, we just thank you. Y'all see our sister coming. Amen. That means that you're not quiet. Amen. We brothers and sisters, we pray for one another. Amen. Not just me. That means you too. Lord God, we just thank you right now for Sister Jane. Father, we thank you. The release that she needs right now. Father, we asking you to release it right now. Father, restoration in her whole body from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Every organ, every muscle, every bone, Lord God, restore, renew right now in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you for the call on her life, Lord God. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Father, we will ask right now, we plead the blood over her. No pressure, Lord God, from the enemy, Lord God. 
stand firm in his word, he said. He said, you shall have exactly what you say you shall have, so you're going to have to speak it. You're going to have to decree and declare. We're going to agree with whatever you say. Yes. So what you say, we say. You're going to have to say it. You're going to have to speak the words. You're going to have to remind the enemy of who you belong to and who's your father. Yes. And that you stand on his word, and his word will do exactly yes. what he said it's going to do. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we just thank you right now. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for this one right here. For this one, Lord God. There's been a lot of pressure, Lord God. Father, we thank you right now. All pressure is released. I thank you for that release right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for release, Lord God. It is gone right now in Jesus' name. Every negative thought, Lord God, every word that has come against her right now in Jesus' name, Lord God, we just thank you, Lord, that it's null and void. Father, she walks in divine health, Lord God. She walks in favor, Lord God. As she speaks, Lord God, it happens right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Father God, I thank you that you're removing all distractions, all naysayers right now in Jesus' name, Lord God. Father God, we bind every plot and scheme of the enemy over her life, Lord God, over her body, Lord God, over her mind right now, Lord God. She is where she is supposed to be. God said, you're right where you're supposed to be. Don't succumb to the pressure. Oh. Don't succumb to the pressure. Don't let go of his word. Don't let go of his hand. Oh, it's going to work. I don't care what they say. I don't care what he said. You shall have exactly what he said you're going to have. You're going to do it. Thank you, Lord. No more tears, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. No more doubt, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Right now, release. Thank you, release. Release right now in Jesus' name, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. Father God, we just thank you. This is the glory of. Father God, I thank you right now. It's not too late. It's not too late. He says it's not too late. Keep trusting him. It's not too late. You're almost there. There's pressure to make you doubt that he's a liar, but he's not a liar. He said it, and it's going to come to pass. He's going to do it right now in Jesus' name. Don't move. Don't give up. Remain steadfast and firm in what he's already told you. He's already told you how it's going to work out. He's already showed you how it's going to work out. You keep hearing it. Trust him. Trust what he says. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You see what happens? Pressure will make you do what you don't normally do. You have to begin to decree and declare what the word of God says. Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for moving in this place today. Father, we thank you for your presence filling this place today. Father, we just thank you right now. Give your glory and honor. Those who are feeling alone, you're not alone. Those who are feeling left out, you're not left out. God has you in a place where you're supposed to be seeking his face, listening for his voice. Everything that he has told you from, this, from that point, from the time he spoke it to you to now, Amen. it's still going to come to pass. Amen. It's still going to happen. Amen. The pressure is there to get you to not believe. 
but you can't not believe. Amen. Yeah. You have to be firm in telling those thoughts, bring them into captivity. You don't line up with the word of God. I know what his word says. Amen. Thought, I'm going to take, take you prisoner right now in Jesus' name. That's how a lot of this starts in thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm telling you, you have to change the way you think. You have to change your posture and your position. And your posture is the way you think. And your position is what you speak from that posture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 We glorify you. Well, now we come to a part where you can do your giving. If you need an offering, I mean, an offering envelope, our ushers, they have, um, you can just raise your hand and they will assist you. Those of you who are on uh, Facebook, there are uh, on your screen, you can do cash app and that's dollar sign spirit and truth CC, or you can do um, church app text ST pound STCC to 54244, or you can do PayPal at spirit and truth Christian Center at gmail.com, or you can mail it to PO Box 632, Mount Vernon, Alabama. But you should be sowing into the kingdom, amen. Everybody, everybody got your seed ready? Raise your hand and say, with this seed, with this seed it, causes me it causes me to be out of debt. Out of debt. And all my needs are met. Needs are met. And, I and I have much more to put in store. Put in, store. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jesus' name. announcements and I'm doing it all today thank you just a little note to say thank you for all the prayers thoughts phone calls and texts and other love gestures in our time of bereavement we really appreci appreciate each and every one of you sincerely the Gibbs Duncan and Muhammad family and that was in the uh, loss of sister Pam's sister also we have today at 315 brother timothy and sister twyla bonds are having a musical appreciation at the living church of god pentecostal in malcolm alabama pastor johnny dennis and first lady sharon dennis and that will kick off at 315 p.m and please remember also um coming up april 1st and April 15th, I believe, is Queen Moves. Um, we have prayer on Wednesday at 7 on Teams. If you don't have the app, if you have a new phone or something happened, if you need a link, just text, call me or text me so that I can get it to you. Amen. Amen. All hearts and minds are clear. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you for this time and your word today. Oh, Next Sunday is Super Sunday. Don't forget, Super Sunday. Amen. Next Sunday. Amen. We do not have a theme this year, so just come as you are. Next Sunday is Super Sunday. We thank God for um, being able to sow into the ministry. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for the time we spent in your word today. Father, thank you for showing up in this place today and moving by your spirit. Father, as these go out, Lord God, at the beginning of this week, Lord God, cover them, protect them, keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. And Father, we spell prayer, special prayer 
for all of our youth in this ministry, Lord God. Keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Keep them safe from peer pressure, Lord God. Father, let them be leaders and not followers. Father, let them seek your face every day. Father, we cover them with faith and love. We thank you for them excelling, Father God, that they are 10 times smarter than the average children, Lord God, because they belong to you. And Father, we give you glory and honor for it in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. 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 So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Be, strong be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. All right, hook somebody on your way out. Amen.